We wanted to add a couple of the new Intel NUCs into the demo lab. They're the version 10. Problem was, when we installed vSphere 7 on them, it wouldn't boot because couldn't find the network driver on. So I did some digging around and found a wonderful site with some great answers to exactly what we were looking for. I'm going to walk you through what I found and how to build a new ISO for this so you can boot your own new Intel NUCs. Stick around. is Verton.net. That's where I found all these goodies at. You can see that it talks specifically about the new NUC. Uh, it's the 10th generation, the speed, the internals of it, and how to configure it and set it up. All the different flavors that are there. Good picture of the back. These things are about the size of my hand, and they are way cool. If you look down a little bit further here, this is exactly the area that I was getting. No network adapter. So, uh, reading down a little bit further along, you can find, oh, here we go. There's some more pictures, and boom, William Lamb and Santo Zine, they already have created a driver. There's a place for you to download it right here. And then down below, using Power CLI, there are some very specific ways. Let me check this real quick. There are very specific ways that you can bundle those together, either for 6.7 Update 3 or vSphere 7.0. Now let me walk you through where the Power CLI stuff is at. It now lives on the VMware code site, and it's version 12, which is currently out. You have two choices. You can either download the zip file itself. I clicked on the download button, and I installed it right from PowerShell inside of my VM client. Much quicker, much smoother to do it that way. But remember, you have to be running PowerShell in administrative mode to get that to work. Okay, so... Inside, we created a file folder called ISO. That's where we're going to build everything into, okay? Now, from there, we're going to kick up our PowerShell. Bring it over so you guys can see this a little bit better. Hold on one second. All right, now let's go back into that uh, ISO directory. Here we are. All right, and our first command is going to set this up uh, for us to begin to build information inside of this. And the set of commands I'm going to put at the end of this that will show you exactly the, the items that I'm pulling across, setting up the depot URL, actually going down to pull the physical standard ESXi image, dropping that into that ISO folder. Okay. And it's 7.0.0, and then 3807, the last version that's there. And there may be others, but this is the one we built off of, and it worked great for me. Now, let's go down here and go into our folder. I've already pre-downloaded the driver. Okay, it's on the right-hand side. It says EXXI67, but it's the same driver you're going to use in 7.0. So I just drag it into the ISO folder. Okay, we can close this down. Now let me run the rest of the commands real quick. I need some Jeopardy music in the background to kind of keep this flowing. I also want to show you in just one second, when you run a command multiple times, it'll give you an error. So I want you to see what that looked like. I think a lot of times when I'm out following instructions, and there it is, everything pops up in red. We've already ran it, so it just gives us the error. Uh, a lot of times I find stuff out on the web and I go to do it and I'm like, I wonder what that looks like. Is that supposed to be that way? So I wanted to make sure that we were getting exactly the way it needed to be. And as you can see now, we are going in to rename this into that NUC folder. But, you know, if, if you don't know what it's supposed to look like, you don't know. All right. So our last piece, and again, you see it's the vendor supported under Verton.net. And the guy at uh, Verton.net, he's got some awesome stuff out there. I'm more than thrilled. And I am not a PowerCLI guy. I am not a PowerShell guy. 
but even I could walk through those things, and it was really helpful to do that. So now that our ISO is created, we're going to go back into the directory that's here. Take a peek. There it is right there. There's a brand new one with NUC at the end. Okay, to let us know it's for the NUC. There's the driver that we copied over, and there's the standard image that we built it off of. So we'll close this down. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in a USB stick. Now we're going to also use Rufus. You can download that. It's for free. It's a tool that will allow you to make a bootable USB. And again, I'm on a virtual machine, so I'm going to tell it I want to use my uh, version 10 so I can actually see the key. Now, if it gives you a, do you want to format, cancel it. You don't really need to, okay, because when we open Rufus and find the ISO, it's going to allow us to do that right from Rufus. Real straightforward menu. Okay, I knew for a fact that that 16 gig thumb drive I just put in there had no label on it. Okay, I'm going to select and find my ISO. There's the brand new one that we just created. Okay, we're going to do open. It's going to drop it in. You see the label that's there. Leave everything default. Okay, I didn't have to change one thing on it. Checking those things and click start. Yep. By the way, make sure you're checking so that it's only going to destroy the, the thumb drive that you put in there. So just verify all that. Click OK. It takes anywhere from, and I sped this up just a tiny bit, anywhere from 20 to a minute and a half, 20 seconds to a minute and a half to run this. But there's the file, new ISO. Everything is there and ready to go. So now we've gone through the Power CLI, we've gone through all the different functions and options that are there, and we've got our brand new bootable USB so I can go to the NUCs now and install those. A pop-up shows you all the options. If you start at the bottom going up, it tells you where to find the code. That's the link to the uh, Power CLI. The NUC version that I was using, which is a 6-core, 4.7 gigahertz. The link to the driver, the Verton.net site, which is amazing. And there's the individual lines that you want to put into the Power CLI inside of PowerShell to create the uh, ISO we just built. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I had a ball doing it. It was really cool. Look down below and you'll see the photos of it booting. And you'll also find some individual things that show about my unpacking. Appreciate it and we'll see you on the next video.